What's up guys? So today's video is going to be on your first permanent change of station. I don't include um, leaving home and going to basic training. AIT is your first PCS. That's more a TCS for training. Um, this is more so going from AIT to your first unit of assignment or going from your first unit to your follow-on unit. Um, some of this stuff is more specific towards Europe or Asia. Um, your orders will walk you through that. I've got a script open on my computer, so if I look over there, don't judge, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just following my script. I've got a lot of information. I wanted to make sure you got the most from this video you could here. So we'll have some asides and sidebar stuff, and then some of it may just be not death by PowerPoint, but, you know, bear with me. So, congratulations, you're PCSing from your first duty station or to your first duty station. It's a great opportunity to go somewhere new, make new friends at your new unit, explore a different culture and country, and see the world. So, Americans are known as loud, boisterous idiots overseas, usually. Do your best to blend in. Learn please and thank you in your new, in the host language of your of the country you're going to. So learn how to say, hello, how are you? The very basics in whatever language. It's a, it's a courtesy thing. Um, do your best to not reinforce the stereotype. Um, if you're young, you're going to be able to drink at an, at an earlier age overseas because you fall under, fall under host nation law. Um, be smart about who you who you drink with. If it if you're going out drinking with another 18 or 19 year old from your unit, you're probably going to get in trouble. Go with someone who knows how to deal with the. Get, go with someone that's responsible. Okay, don't get yourself in trouble. Alcohol is the single biggest career killer overseas. Um, don't be in a hurry to marry someone. Take your time, get to know them, because certain places. If you get married to someone and you get them their citizenship here or they maintain their citizenship in their old uh, former country of um, residence, you may have to pay a lot for them for the rest of their lives. So take your time. Get to know someone. Don't jump into anything. So PCS is a permanent change of station. You're going somewhere new to start a new job or do a similar job to what you were doing at your previous duty station. You're just doing it in a new location. So if you're an MP or an 11 bang, you're going to go overseas and do that. You're just going to be doing it for a different unit. You may be, you may have made sergeant at your last unit. Um, and now you're leaving the unit to fill a slot that human resources command identified. Like uh, 527th MP company came up on the net and said, hey, we need sergeants real bad. They're going to get a lot of sergeants, especially if you've been at your previous unit uh, for quite a while. What's up, guys? Strike deep. Um, all right, so kind of the order of events. Some of this is going to be chronological, and some of it's just stuff I, I put in here where it fit in. So if it sounds chronological, I'll try and identify it. So the first thing, this is chronological. Receive your orders from MPD. I believe it's Military Processing Division, Directorate, something like that. Uh, essentially, it is the head office for all military personnel. They'll be in charge of your in-processing when you get there and out-processing and all that stuff right when you leave. It's where how you in-process the installation. Some of your orders may also come from S1. When I was in Germany, I believe I got notified I had orders and I picked up a set from MPD at Building 10 there. Um... Or I may have been handed them to my unit. I don't remember it was, or handed them by my S1. I don't remember. Um, anyways, you'll you'll get told if you're, you, you will know you have orders. You'll either get an email from HRC or what have you. You will know. So make about 10 to 20 copies as pretty much everywhere you go during out processing is going to want a copy. So if you're going to Germany or coming from Germany, and you're shipping a vehicle there or back, that's going to be about 10 copies of orders that go with the vehicle. Because anyone that has any connection with that vehicle needs to know 
you don't bill Snuffleupagus, you bill the army, essentially. So make tons of copies. You can always shred them later if you need them. Make a ton of copies. Make more than you think you need because it's not going to be enough. This is also chronological, this next one. Schedule your household goods and your vehicle shipment as soon as possible. The sooner your items are shipped out, the greater chance that they may beat you to your new duty station. Check your orders for instructions. If you're going to Europe or Asia, chances are you're not going to be able to bring guns or ammunition, suppressors, anything of that nature that you may have been cleared to have or anything. You can still bring magazines for your weapon if you have an AR-15. The magazines are going to work with an M4. So you can have those shipped, but it needs to be professional gear. So on your orders, you're going to have it broken down. You're allowed this many pounds of household goods, married folks. It adjusts. It almost doubles, if not double plus change, if you're married because your spouse has stuff too, right? Um, otherwise, single soldiers, you're not going to have a lot. You shouldn't have that much stuff anyways because you live a pretty transient existence. Um, you're also going to have a section for professional gear. You're going to have thus and such many pounds. You can kind of slop over your household goods. Just be prepared to explain why it's why your couch is professional gear or whatever if you try and ship it under that, right? Uh, it's m meant more for retained issues stuff like clothing, books, papers, manuals, stuff like that. Um, and so on. And then you're going to generally be able to ship one vehicle. Um, if you're going to Japan, you're not going to be able to ship a vehicle or Korea unless you're an officer or married. And there's your orders will specify that. Generally speaking, in Korea, you don't need a car because people drive insane. So the less dumb Americans essentially are on the road, the better. So not taking a pass at you guys. I'm sure you're all great drivers, but um, driving in different countries is weird. Um, on the front of vehicles, if you are going to Germany, you can get on JKO and take the uh, take the test for getting your uh, USARA, U.S. Army Europe license. Pay attention. Don't just bum rush through it. If someone created a template in your unit for everyone to pass, sure, you can use it, pass the test, look smart, but make sure you pay attention. Driving in Europe is a lot different. Driving and alcohol are one of the biggest things that get people uh, hung up over there, so be smart. Chronological again here. Pack your household goods. The, the moving company will do it for you. You can just sit on the couch and drink beer the entire time they are there, if you choose to. You have to know what's being packed and what's being inventoried, because they will pack everything. If you have trash in your trash can, when they come to pack the trash can, they're going to pack the bag with trash in it and the trash can. So make very sure you like tape off and color codes on the floor or something. Like if it's in the yellow box, it's professional equipment. If it's in this box, I want you to, or if it's in the red box, take it, no questions asked. It's pre-packed, we're satisfied. If it's in the, the box with question mark duct tape, ask me first, right? Make sure the movers understand. In a foreign country, this is going to be a little different because I had a German moving company come to Germany to pack up my barracks room. So make it as simple as you can. This corner, professional gear, and you can use the pointy talky on their sheet. Like, this is this. This cor this stuff is this. This stuff come with me. Or this stuff don't touch. Stuff like that. Don't, don't be an asshole to them, but make it communicate as simply as you can, whether that's using a translation app or whatever. Um, I've heard a lot of stories about goods getting stolen, um, or broken. Um, it, it's sad, but it does happen. So make sure you do a thorough inventory on all your stuff. Take pictures of things plugged in and working like your 412 inch plasma screen TV. Make sure you take a picture of that being on functional and used because if it shows up broken, the first thing the movers are going to say is, we didn't do it, you need proof so that when you file your claim to get paid for it, it's less work because, well, well, here's a picture of it obviously working. So it sat in your container in your on your property 
for this many months, of course it's your fault it was broken. Make sure you do a thorough inventory. Take your time. And they will pack each, um, I don't have one ready to hand, but if you have a junk drawer and you have a bunch of Glock disassembly punches as an example, they will wrap them individually and pack them individually. So <laughs> know what you're getting into. It's gonna take some time. Research your new duty station location. This is just a good practice. Um, find out if you're going to need special adapters to make your stuff work. Europe and Asia have different outlets than we do here in the U.S. Your barracks or government lease quarters will likely be dual wired with U.S. standard and host nation outlets. Things like a clock, like if you have a U.S. standard alarm clock uh, or a U.S. Um, US outleted alarm clock, it's gonna lose time because that that power is translated or converted from host nation um, voltage to US and somewhere in there something happens with the electricity that makes the clock lose time. I don't remember what it is. It was explained to me almost 10 years ago now, so don't judge. I'll see if I have an example of a European outlet. I don't think I do, ready to hand. Um, it's going to be a flat plug with two prongs. It'll look, I know it's kind of profane, maybe, I don't know. If you, if you don't know, you don't know. It's going to look similar to this. It's going to be a flat puck, like a half circle with two probes at the front of it, and that's what you plug it into. Um, other countries, yeah, you'll know. So make sure you have a way to charge your phone that doesn't require plugging into an outlet because you might be screwed until you go to the store. The PX will have all this stuff. So the day's not lost. Just hit the PX the day you get there, which you probably will. Um, let me see. Let's move on here. I kind of lost my place. So this is a little out of order. Uh, your vehicle, it's going to need to be shipped overseas. If it's going to Europe, it's going to go from wherever you are to the closest port. If you're in Colorado, it goes down to Galveston, Texas. It goes on a boat, and when it gets there, it gets there. Uh, West Coast, I don't remember if it goes to California or if it ships out of Seattle. You'll, you'll be told. Um, East Coast goes to Florida, I believe, and then it loads out from there. So somewhere... Whatever, you'll figure it out. Your um, your orders will tell you. So if you bought a brand new Mustang because you lived in Fort Benning, Georgia, where any sort of snow on the ground causes a mass panic and they close the roads or are stationed in the middle of California, you may consider selling that. Um, Europe, for example, has very cold, wet, and snowy winters. I think the worst one I saw was six to eight inches of snow on the deck. I grew up driving in the snow. I was going to a call for service barely above idle, and it was so bad. Or my speed was barely above just idling down the road, and the roads were so bad that I tapped the brake and ended up um, trying to slow down to an absolute crawl going around the corner. And I ended up swapping ends, and the only reason I didn't go off the road was I hit some uh, some powder. Those of you that don't know how to drive in the snow, sure, go ahead and judge. Um, oh, you just don't know how to drive in the snow. Well, you probably don't either, unless you grew up doing it a lot. And you will understand when you get over there. Um, I would recommend something four-wheel or all-wheel drive. Um, you're going to get... A rations card for, um, among other things, fuel. It will allow you to buy fuel at the national average price for the United States versus the price per liter overseas. So if you got a big old fuel-sucking diesel truck, make a good decision. Leave it here. Uh, <laughs> So do what you do, right? I'm I'm just giving you advice here, unsolicited, maybe solicited because you typed it into YouTube. Who knows? Um, do the decision, make the decision that's right for you. But your fuel ration is going to vary depending on what kind of car you have, 
Uh, if you have a Dodge Challenger, you're going to blow through your ration pretty quick, especially once you get out on the Autobahn and speed limit no longer exists in some areas. You can watch your gas gauge go down. So anyway, make sure your vehicle is in tip-top mechanical shape. It is going to be inspected for cleanliness before export. Um, that way you're not bringing nasty, dirty U.S. soil contamination over to Europe and spreading some sort of infestation. Um, so it's anything that looks broken will need to be fixed. Anything leaking will need to be fixed. There's places that you can pay to have your vehicle prepped to be cleaned. Um, have a very thorough mechanical inspection done. Because when you get to Germany, for example, your car is going to be brought to you or you'll be given a couple days to go get your vehicle from Bremerhaven or wherever it comes in. Um, I might be saying it wrong. It's been years since I've dealt with this stuff, so... Oops. Um, so, you're going to get a set of temporary shipping tags. They're going to start with QQ. Um, and you can't... Those aren't going to be your permanent tags. You're going to need to go to your vehicle inspection place with a copy of your orders, your use or a license, proof of insurance, and a few other documents. And pay to have your vehicle inspected. If they bless off on it, um, you go to vehicle registration on base and you get your tags issued to you there. If you're in Hohenfels, there was a guy at the vehicle inspection place that loved the hot tamales candy. I don't remember his name, but if he's still there, you're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, so make sure your car's in tip-top shape and as clean as you can possibly get it. There's going to be a list, a very minimal list of stuff that you can leave in it to ship it. So car seats and stuff, that ain't it. Um, plan accordingly. Follow it exactly. Be prepared for it to change when you get down there because someone's having a bad day. Just roll with it. Equipment. like um, We're going to move on here. So equipment. CIF. Check your clothing record carefully for items that need to be turned in. Clean them thoroughly, very thoroughly. It was not uncommon to see soldiers ha hanging up their gutted IOTV with the, with the soft armor and the hard plates out of it and power washing it in the car wash on base. If you want to risk blowing a hole in it with a power washer, that's fine. Excuse me, that's a way to do it. Or you can have them cleaned by post la post laundry, quartermaster laundry, whatever it's excuse me known as. Um, and this is essentially army laundry people cleaning your stuff to the army standard. Your stuff's gonna go through there anyways after you turn it in, but whatever. Um, food for thought here: if you're Equipment is given to CIF with a tag on it from Quartermaster Laundry uh, with the order number and whatever else they put on there. Generally speaking, CIF has to accept it because if the Army cleaning it to Army clean standards doesn't get it clean enough, it's never going to be clean enough. So if you can, if your, CI, if your post laundry is accepting TA-50, uh, your OCIE equipment, have them clean it. Um, the one here on Carson stopped doing it just before COVID or during COVID, and they've never started up again. So all clear is a good place. It's going to cost you. Um, I had no issues turning in my stuff. First time go, 100%. So you can get it professionally cleaned. That's an option. It's going to cost you three to $400, depending on how much you have and where you're at. You're going to live around a military base, so like, there's going to be a bazillion places offering to clean your stuff. Talk to them. Don't get, don't get put over the barrel price-wise, but it's going to cost you no matter what. All right, moving on. So your unit. You're assigned to the unit until you start your PCS leave. Do your best to be cool with people, even if you don't like them until you're gone. You may need to reach back and have your 
old units um, S1 send you a document that didn't make it with you for some reason. This does actually happen. Um, or it may not have been processed in time. S1 is... Um, they are what they are. I, I don't know what it is. Sometimes it's the NCOIC or the OIC. S1 can be great or they can be absolutely awful. I'm not throwing shade at you, um, human resources guys. I, I don't know what your job entails, but I know you stay busy, but manage your workflow, guys. So, moral of the story is here, don't be a dick. Um, don't go around telling off your NCOs before you leave or anything, because generally you're going to belong to that unit for 30, 30 more days um, calendar days before you get to leave, depending on when you get your orders. Um, when I was in 527th and I PCS'd over here, I got 30 whole days to clear. Um, the first day I cleared everywhere except the unit and final out with MPD. So I just got stuck in my barracks room not doing anything i showed up for pt every morning and was promptly told go away or go to the gym we don't want to be the reason you don't pcs we don't want to get you hurt go do something don't be here thanks for showing up p.s stop showing up um i waited for that lawful order to not to not show up anymore um yeah so don't be an asshole um before you leave, you're going to turn in any unit issued equipment and they're going to clear your clothing record from their records. So generally you're going to have to clear CIF before you go to supply. They're going to clear your unit hand receipt, make sure you turned in everything or uh, in some cases you've signed over your vehicles or any other unit property that was yours to maintain accountability of to someone else and ordered anything that was damaged or missing. You may or may not have to get uh, charged for it. Um, yeah. You may also have to provide a report, counseling, whatever, about why your equipment was damaged or broken. When I went to Europe, one of my soldiers, um, <laughs> he was taking off his wet weather top, and we were in the middle of nowhere in this random super strong gust of wind came up blew it right out of his hands and into the forest before he could chase it down and get it so damaged gone lost field loss what can you do right so just make sure you maintain accountability of all your stuff um find a way to mark it as yours so people don't steal it there's one thief in the army everyone else is just trying to get their stuff back once you leave cif with your stuff when you sign that document you're agreeing to take care of it, keep it clean, and keep accountability of it. So don't take it, don't take it lightly. The last one's another kind of grab bag thing: um, college insurance and mail, and any generally anything, any other odds and ends. Um, so you're going to need to let your car insurance and the bank your car is financed through know that the vehicle is going to be overseas. I've heard reports that some banks don't allow the vehicle to sh be shipped overseas because they can't repo it. I, I don't know what to tell you. If, if your bank tells you that, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to leave the car with mom and dad, brother, sister, uncle, someone you trust. Um... If you have USAA, generally you can tell them the car's in storage. It's going to cut your bill down to almost nothing. But make sure whoever you leave the car with understands it is not to be driven. They can start it and like roll it back and forth in the driveway to keep things moving and not rusting up and seizing up and whatever. But it is not to be driven on the road. Make the decision that works for you. Uh, make sure the bank understands it is a military obligation. They may ask for orders or some statement or letter from your commander or whatever saying, hey, Specialist Snuffleupagus is on orders to go overseas. Um, I cer hereby certify that or whatever. Um, if you made a bad decision and got a car with a high interest rate or payment, i.e. the fabled specialist, brand new private that goes out and buys a brand new Mustang at a 30 or 
like a 20 year old Mustang at a 30% interest rate for three times what it's worth, you're probably not going to be able to take that piece of junk overseas because it's either mechanically not going to be okay or chances are you got financed through the dealership because no bank would touch you because you either had no credit, bad credit, whatever. Um, prepare yourself to be told, no, you're not taking our car anywhere because it's theirs until you pay it off. Uh, your unit in JAG may be able to help you out with this, but it's going to take a lot of time. So as soon as you find out, call the bank, make sure it's okay. If not, arrange to get rid of the vehicle or leave it somewhere. <clears throat> so college, make sure you let your advisor know, hey, I'm PCSing. I'm moving to Germany. I got orders. I have no choice. Can I finish my term early? Turn my work in early? You know, get, get released to go through at my own pace through the unit. Um, drop the class or whatever you need to do. They will, it, you're not the first person that they've dealt with doing this. So they'll walk you through it. Mail. This is often overlooked. You may be able to mail some immediate need items to your sponsor at your new unit. Like if you've got a baby, mail the current size diapers and mail the next size up formula or what, whatever you whatever you anticipate needing immediately when you get there maybe mail it to them if they're cool with it they may just be like yeah we'll put it in the garage for you whatever try and keep it to a minimum so you're not not uh, a burden to them you may even be able to mail some stuff to your unit i've heard of it done i never did it generally the army mail system is an absolute mess to begin with so do, do what you do, man. The, the worst they're going to say is no, if you ask. Or they'll be like, that's what your household goods is for. Well, okay, that doesn't help once it's already left. But um, generally speaking, your mail is going to be need or going to need to be sent to someone stateside. So I always had stuff sent to my mom and dad's address because they didn't mind. They understood. And mom would either scan it and email it to me or wait until I got there. Um, it's a federal offense to open someone else's mail. I gave her permission to open it so that we could assess the immediacy of it via FaceTime. And then, okay, cool. Here's 10 bucks. Like mail that to me as soon as I tell you my address. Like the minute I tell you the address, <laughs> go, go, go to the post office or, um, anything like that. Make sure you let people know that you're moving ahead of time and they will either they can either arrange to email you stuff so on uh, if you go to germany you're going to get what's called a cmr box community mail room and that'll be your local address so it's going to be your name or whomever's name cmr 414 box whatever and it's going to be a po box um apo Army Post Office, AE, Army Europe, Army, whatever, wherever you're at, blah, 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 blah for the zip code. Fun fact, that zip code is usually in um, New York. So you can say APO for the city, New York, 09173, and you can have certain things shipped to you that otherwise couldn't come overseas. Um, that'll all be explained to you when you sign for it or sign for your box. So anyways, that's enough for now. Questions, comments, put them down below. Um, and we'll go forward. I did have one more thing that's kind of been on my mind. Uh, so when you go overseas, you're already fighting against the reputation Americans have. So talking to someone in what you think is a German accent, it's not going to help them understand. Um, speaking slower and louder also it, it doesn't help it just makes people angry with you so don't don't do any of that stupid stuff that americans usually do overseas uh be a good neighbor so i live in the same place that i lived part of the right before i got out of the army i see a lot of new soldiers in here people that i can recognize as soldiers the other day I was out and people were drunkenly shouting at me from their balcony while I was out doing uh, doing a walk with a backpack on. They're like, why aren't you in uniform? Why aren't you wearing boots? You know, blah, blah, blah. 
don't do that stuff, man. Like, don't be an idiot. Be a good neighbor, whether you're in the United States or overseas. Um, generally, that's people's first impression of the military, unless they had a family member in the military. Do you want people to think that people in the army are all drunken buffoons that shout off their balcony at one in the morning? Probably not, right? You're, you're an ambassador for the army, so don't be an idiot. Um... Don't let the liquor call the shots. Um, if you know, you know. The liquor's calling the shots now, Randy. Uh, love that show. Highly recommend if you need some uh, comedic relief. Um, yeah, just be a good neighbor. Like when you're over, when you're overseas, you may live in a community where there's a community recycling center that's open one day a week. Be a good neighbor. Take your recyclables up there and get rid of them help people. Uh, if you're in Europe, anyone that's under the age of 40 or looks to be under the age of 40 probably speaks English. They may or may not speak it to you because a lot of Germans especially don't like to speak English unless they feel like they are doing it absolutely correctly. Or they may just have, they, they may speak very little English. Some people are better at languages than others. It's not a big thing. At least try and learn some of the language. Don't, don't walk around with you know, a big shirt that says USA or back-to-back -back world champs or any of that stupid stuff. Um, world, in Germany especially, World War I and World War II are a very, considered a very sad time in that culture. And a lot of them like to not necessarily pretend it doesn't exist, but it's not a commonly spoken about thing because it's known as the dark time. Um... Don't bring that up. Don't don't rub their noses in it. Don't be an idiot. Be a good neighbor. All right. Take care, guys. That's it. Off the soapbox. Talk to you later.